Good morning, everyone. Uh, if you haven't already, I invite you to please come in and take your seats as we quiet our hearts and our minds and prepare ourselves for worship this morning. Our opening hymn this morning is in your red hymnals on page 144, and as you are able, please stand. Let's join together in singing, This Is My Father's World.
name is Laura Meyer. Please join me for our call to worship from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. We will praise you for your mighty deeds, O God, according to your surpassing greatness. Praise the Lord with the sounds of the trumpet, with tambourine and the dance. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Most glorious God, you judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains yield prosperity for all your people, and the hills are clothed with your splendor. You defend the cause of the poor and deliver the needy. You are like the rain that falls on the grass, like showers that water the earth. Filled with the joy and peace of believing, we will sing you our praises and serve you with our whole being to the end that the nations may affirm your glory. Continue to hear us, Lord, as we pray together in the words you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I'll try it again. Good morning. Just a tiny bit better. I'm sorry. Let's make it sound like there's a million people in here. Good morning. There they are. They're awake now. I did that for you, you know. I am so delighted to be here on this rainy, gloomy morning with you all. Welcome to Glenel United Methodist Church. Our focus, whether you are here in person or you're online with us, is to love God and our neighbors and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. My name is Denise Martin, in case you missed that. Um, I'm delighted to be on staff here um, and serve with you. 
Uh, whether you're here today for the very first time or you've been here for, for a long time, we sure are glad to, to have you with us this morning. And if you're online this morning, um, welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us. If you'll let us know that you're here, maybe drop a hello in the, in the chat. And also you can um, even pray together. And, and Wendy is our online host today and we'll be happy to, to chat with you. Um, if you were here last Sunday, you all experienced the Pentecost picnic, and it was fabulous. If you were not here, we sure did miss you, and we hope that you'll mark your calendars for the next event to be together. It was fabulous. Thank you, Fellowship Committee. Yes, and uh, if um, you have not registered for Vacation Bible School yet, there's still time. Um, tell your neighbors, your friends, we would love to have this place packed with kids, which means we also need to have it packed with adults and youth to help lead. So you can sign up online or you can speak to Miss Donna or myself. Also, same with Camp Hope. I do have um, a couple spots if you're like, if that's nagging on you and you're one of our youth, you can still join me. But also I do invite all of you, if you would, to start, if you haven't already, be in prayer for our mission team. We leave very soon on, on June 26th. So it's getting real. We've gotten our assignments. We know the families we're going to help. It's personal, and you all are along with us. So if you will just be lifting up our mission team, I would really appreciate it. The United Methodist Women are hosting a book swap after worship on, on June 19th. That's Father's Day. So bring a good condition, bring your good condition books that you want to swap um, to the church on, on that day, and you can drop them off at the UMW table and in the narthex, and the ladies will sort them and have them all ready for the others to, to browse on the 19th. Um, you can find out information about these announcements and more by going to our website or checking out our weekly newsletter. As we switch our hearts to prepare for a time of offering, I want to remind you that your giving makes an impact. It's an act of worship to the Lord and helps us to continue our mission and ministry here at Glenelg United Methodist Church. There are several ways you can give through our website. You can go directly to our giving page at glenelumc.org slash online dash giving. Uh, Church online, you may click the give tab. And here in person, our offering plates um, will be coming forward by our ushers in just a moment, and the black box is available in the back of the church. And of course, um, you can always uh, mail your check or drop it off at the secure mailbox in front of the church. Please join me and my family in giving generously today. Thank you.
eternal God of the covenant, you call us, commission us, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We gather as Christ's people in response to your call. We seek to be faithful to your commission to make disciples of all the nations. Filled with your spirit, our hearts beat with joy as with our voices we sing you our praise. You are the God of our faith, just, true, and righteous. Accept now and multiply our offerings in response to your love. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. Well, good morning. I sure am, I am so excited to see a few of my friends. I haven't seen a few of you in a few weeks, so it is good to be together. So happy Sunday. Do you know what we talked about last week? Should we look back before we look forward to today? I think we should. Last week, we talked about the Holy Spirit. Does anybody know what the Holy Spirit is? No. I like your answer because you know what? Sometimes we just don't know. Well, the Holy Spirit, in simple words, is it's the Spirit of God. Right? Do you feel it? Because last week it was Pentecost and we talked all about how the Spirit came and filled the people, right? And so in, in 1 John chapter 4, 9 through 13, we talked about the passage in the passage we talked about how God loves us so much that he came to us in person, in the person of Jesus, to show us. And God also shows his great love for us by sending his Holy Spirit to always be with us. Always. Always. You get that? Yeah. Always. And when God sent us his spirit on Pentecost, that is when the church was born. And so the church is filled with God's Holy Spirit. And because of that, we can make, can you do the wave? I told you I'd work that in. Yeah. Uh, can you do the wave? Yeah. We can make ways for Jesus and help change the world. So last Sunday, not only was it Pentecost Sunday, but we had a picnic outside and there were people in red and it was food and so much fun and people chatting together. And I was always sitting there thinking, oh yeah, if this isn't the Holy Spirit filled in here with all of these people and then out there talking with one another, I'm not sure what is. We are God's church. And so last Sunday, this church wasn't born, but on, this, on the Sunday of Pentecost, a long, long time ago. And so now we kind of have a job to do. Now that we know about this and we know that we are filled with the Spirit, we can't just let it live in us without doing anything about it. So I was thinking to myself, hmm, what can I do about this? And I was thinking that sometimes things come upon me unintentionally, I will admit. I tell you all crazy stories of things that happened to me during the week. But this week I was very intentional just about when I was out in the world to share with people who I am. And so that's kind of hard for me, I'll be honest. I like the unintentional things that happen to me. To be intentional sometimes when you're out in the world is a little bit scary, even for Miss Denise. So to tell somebody, like, I work at Glenelg United Methodist Church, and I get to work with the youth and kids, it sounded like all of a sudden the spotlight was on me. But I was being intentional to let people know um, that we, we are we're a, a part of God's world together, whether we're in this church or we're out in the world. And so I challenge you on this last week of school, not that you have to go up to your friend and say, hi, I'm Anna, and I belong to Glenel United Methodist Church, and they're my people. But you could say, hey, we had this awesome picnic last week, and I missed it. We missed you, by the way. But next week, I'm going to be there if you want to come too. You could say something like that. You just let people know who you are, who loves you, and that they're welcome to be a part of this family too, right? And not just here at Glenel, but God is with us everywhere we go, and, and we want to let people know that. So that's my challenge for you on this last week of school. Some of you will come back next week, and you'll be sixth graders, won't you? Officially, or are you already officially sixth graders? Not yet. So in a week? Okay, one week, I'll check back with my sixth graders, all right? Let's pray. Dear Lord, you do fill us with your spirit, and I feel it so much in this church and in this family 
So Lord, be with us during this last week of school for these kids and help us to shine your love no matter where we go and to let people know that you love us and, um, and that we love them. And Lord, I just um, I thank you for all of the goodness that you give us. And I do pray your protection over these kids as they, they walk through this last week of school. So help them to shine your light no matter where they are. In your name we pray. Amen. Y'all may go to Sunday school if you wish. Thank you, choir. Amen. Amen. Well, my name is David Deans, uh, one of the pastors here at uh, Glenelg, and I am uh, grateful to bring the word to you today. I want to thank uh, Craig Lee for bringing uh, the message last week as he introduced our, our series uh, of Making Waves. 
Um, I had just come off, I think Craig might have mentioned that, come off of the annual conference uh, uh, week, and so was grateful for Craig uh, to be able to, to uh, have the message for us. I didn't have to worry about that as well. Am I still on? There we go. There we go. Um, and we will have an annual conference update. It'll be in the, uh, uh, I think it was in the newsletter this Friday. So if you're interested on what happens at annual conference, kind of our yearly gathering of clergy and laity in our Baltimore, Washington conference, you can see that update uh, in the newsletter this past, uh, this past Friday. Well, before I go on, I've got another uh, just good news to, to praise God for. Uh, many of us have been praying for Sandy Thrasher uh, as she's been going through uh, some chemo and different um, treatments along the way. Not too long ago, she did uh, a very in-depth kind of experimental procedure that cleaned her blood, and we've been praying that she would have success with that. Uh, they did some scans here recently, and Tom reports this morning that the doctors have said she is in remission. So we praise God for that. Thank you, God. We also know we have others in our, in our congregation that we are still praying for that are going through cancer, and so we want to be praying for them. Uh, God can do all things. Uh, all things are possible in him, and so we want to be praying for just God's peace, God's presence, God's healing uh, with our other folks in our congregation and in, in our families there as well. But when we have something to celebrate, we, we need to celebrate that and give God thanks. All right, so we're going to uh, jump into this sermon series about making waves, and I promised uh, Pastor Denise I wouldn't make you all do the wave, so she had the kids do the wave. But it's about making waves. There we go. You might want to do the wave. Uh, today is about making waves and about uh, that when we go out to make waves in the name of Jesus, we can change the world around us. Now, it's easy to start thinking about waves, right? It's summertime, so maybe waves are already on your mind. Maybe you've even experienced some waves already. Memorial Day weekend wasn't too far uh, ago, and I know a lot of people went to the beach for that weekend. But when we think about waves, people take notice of waves, don't we? We take notice of waves. Whether you're a, you are a boater, or maybe a beach lover, or a water park kind of person, Waves can be relaxing, waves can be fun, but waves can also be disruptive. As a boater myself, I always check the bay report before we go boating to make sure uh, how big the waves are. Because if the waves are, are too big, when I go out boating, right, my boating experience isn't going to be too fun and I'm just going to make everybody on my boat seasick. So I need to make sure the waves aren't too big when I go boating. And when I go to the beach, uh, you know, in the morning from the hotel, if I've got beachfront, uh, happen to be privileged enough to have beachfront, I, I want to look out to see that flag by the, by the lifeguard stand, right? And I hate to see when it's red, because that means I can't go swimming, and that means the seas are going to be rough, and we even have to worry about uh, beach erosion and flooding. So we, you know, think through, we, we think about that as well. Then again, waves can also wash away debris, right? And smooth out the sand. I love coming down to the beach after high tide. Much of the beach has been wiped clean as if a great reset has occurred. All the footprints and the holes and the sand castles from earlier in the day have gotten washed away, leaving behind a smooth, untouched looking beach. And scattered across the sand are a whole new crop of seashells, as if the ocean has offered them up as a new gift for people to find. The old has been washed away, and the new has come. As we follow Jesus and imitate Jesus, the, the ultimate wave maker, we too are called to live and serve and speak in such a way that people will take notice. Sometimes our wave making will, will bring peace and comfort and, and joy. But sometimes our waves will be disruptive and unwelcomed. But ultimately, our goal is to make Jesus known, the one who washes away our sin, our guilt and pain, and gives us a new beginning and eternal life. The waves we make following Jesus can indeed 
change the world. So as Laura comes up to read, go ahead and get out your Bible or your Bible app and open to Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 25. And as Laura reads, I want you to listen for what we can learn about making waves for Jesus. The apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all of the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. But no one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out onto the street on beds and mats so Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. The high priest and his officials, who were Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night opened the gates of the jail and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple as they were told and immediately began teaching. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened in the high council, the full assembly of the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought from the jail for trial. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported, the jail was securely locked with the guards standing outside, but when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priests heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple, teaching the people. Amen, thank you, Laura. And thank you again. That was a great picnic last week uh, that you and the fellowship committee put together. It was wonderful. Um, And if you all missed it, you missed something that was really awesome here, but many of us were here, uh, and it was a beautiful day. We couldn't have asked for a more beautiful day, and it was just some great food and great time to catch up with one another. Uh, We don't always have that kind of time to get to know each other and catch up with one another, so that was nice to be able to do that and look forward to some more of those uh, in in the future. And if you all are online with us, I want to encourage you. You're missing out, too. There's something special about the the interaction, in-person interaction, so if you're if you're willing, uh, I know where some of us are still worried about COVID, but I just want to encourage you, uh, come out, join us in person, or if we have those outdoor events on a nice day, and that's something you're willing to do, then I just want to encourage you to, to join us there as well. It's just, it is, it's something, something we can't get uh, online, what we get when we're in person together. Well, in Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 25, that Laura just read, the apostles are making huge waves in Jerusalem, right? Lots of people are taking notice. And the Holy Spirit is, is evident in and through them, performing many miraculous signs and wonders. And crowds of people are, are coming from everywhere. They're coming from villages outside of Jerusalem as far as, as they can see. And people are coming in, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits. And the Bible says they are all being healed. And through that and in that, more and more people are believing in Jesus. Friends, this is the kind of waves that the Holy Spirit makes and the kind of waves that God wants to make through us too if we'll let him. And Craig spoke about this last week and so today we're gonna dive in a little bit more to see what we can expect when we make waves for Jesus. And the first point this morning is this. When, when making ways for Jesus, expect opposition. Waves don't go unnoticed without some people getting upset. Remember, waves can be disrup- disruptive. They, they can disturb the status quo. They rock the boat. 
They make people uncomfortable. They threaten those in power. And they can make people jealous, as it did the high priest and his officials. The miraculous and and powerful work of the apostles in Jerusalem was getting all kinds of attention. People were coming out of the woodwork to see what was going on and to hear the preaching of the apostles and, of course, to be healed. The name of Jesus was being praised. New followers of Jesus were being made. The the very Jesus, here's the thing, this was the very Jesus that the high priest and the religious leaders had put to death on the cross not long ago for claiming to be the Messiah and and God. And, And here His disciples are back again, brazen and brave, claiming that this Jesus is alive and in his name, creating, doing these miracles, making these huge waves throughout the city. Not only was the high priest and his officials jealous, but I'm sure they felt threatened and were more than a little perturbed at these uneducated, no-name disciples who were stirring up all this commotion about Jesus again. So they had the apostles arrested and, and thrown into jail and even flogged. When making ways for Jesus, friends, opposition will come from many directions, even from the religious establishment. When I was planting a church a few years back, some of the heaviest opposition, believe it or not, came from from other churches, even other United Methodist churches, claiming that we were in their territory and interfering with their ministries. Meanwhile, our style of worship and style of ministry was was totally different than than these other churches. We were connecting with totally different people than than they were. And and besides, we we could have all uh, filled three or four times over our worship gatherings and our small groups uh, reaching all the lost people that were, that were in those towns that we were looking at. So a few weeks back, I was, I was telling you even about uh, my friend Samuel in Kenya, who while visiting a large refugee camp, met several Muslims who, who showed an interest in Jesus. One of the Muslims even wanted to to, to have a Bible to read. And so Samuel found him a Bible and gave him one. Well, as it turns out, one of these men was the son of an imam, which is the imam in the, in the Muslim faith is like their, their pastor, their priest, their spiritual leader. And the other was an evangelist and a recruiter for the Muslim community in that camp. And a third was a thief with a very bad reputation. When others from the community began to find out that even these men had become open to knowing Jesus and reading the Bible, they they couldn't believe it. And they felt threatened. Samuel started to receive threats and suspicious, weird phone calls in the middle of the night. And he decided he needed to leave the camp. Opposition comes in many forms. As a pastor, I don't know how many times I've I've seen a church begin to to really thrive, begin to have a significant growth in in their faith and in the the people coming to know Jesus or or significant uh, uh, progress in a ministry only to have key leaders get sick or be moved or lose a job or fall to temptation. It's happened too many times to be coincidence. I'm sure you all have experienced opposition too when you've tried to make waves in the name of Jesus. Maybe you've experienced it even in a a church congregation yourself or or at work or, or with your friend group or even with your own family. Whenever you start drawing closer to Jesus, or helping others to draw closer to Jesus, whenever you stand up for God's righteousness and justice, expect opposition. As Paul explains to the church in Ephesus, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. 
Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. You know, when, when going into battle, you expect opposition, right? So, so you prepare for it. If you're a soldier going to war, you, you, you're expecting, hey, we're going we're gonna to meet some, some challenges, some obstacles, and some people who don't want us to, to move forward. And so they prepare for it. Likewise Paul, likewise, Paul says that in making waves for Jesus, we're entering a spiritual battle. When you're going to go out making waves for Jesus, especially when those waves are disruptive, it's a spiritual battle. And so Paul says, prepare for it by putting on the armor of God. If you keep reading in those verses, it talks to us, it tells us what that armor of God is, the, the belt of truth. Maybe some of you learned this as a, as a kid. Remember the, you used to have to dress up with the belt of truth and the, what was it, the, the breastplate, of, breastplate of righteousness, the, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and of course, lots and lots and lots of prayer. Properly put on and embraced, this spiritual armor protects us from, from opposition and even enables us to fight back. Expect opposition and prepare by putting on the armor of God. Number two, when making ways for Jesus, trust God for deliverance. <clears throat> Though the apostles were arrested and thrown in jail, God sends an, an angel to free them. You know, this reminds me of a, a story just, I think it was a couple weeks back that we studied in Acts 16 where, do you remember where Paul and Silas were thrown into prison and an angel frees them from prison as well with the earthquake and all the doors fall in and somehow, um, you know, they, they stay in order to, the, they ended up saving the jailer and, and his whole family came to Christ that, that night. But once again, in this story, uh, Acts 5, we see God delivering the disciples from opposition and the things that would keep them from doing the will of God. If God has sent you to make waves, I believe he will deliver you from, from anything that tries to prevent you from doing that mission. God can and, and often does deliver us from all kinds of troubles in our life, but but I believe God will always save us from those things that keep us from completing his will if we are faithful to do what he's called us to do. You know, recently our church helped a family in our community find a home and then move. That seemed like an impossible task. But our church, our congregation felt called to do it. And led by Craig Lee, the volunteers and the, the resources came together and all the obstacles were overcome. There was more working against us than you know, but, but God's grace prevailed. In a few weeks, 16 youth and adults from our church are headed out to Frostburg, Maryland to be a part of Camp Hope. Denise was just talking about uh, Camp Hope uh, during the announcements. So 16 of our, our youth and, and adults are headed out. Now Camp Hope is a program that offers free services to repair the homes of disadvantaged families living in Allegheny County, Maryland and other neighboring communities in, in West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Now the challenges to, to getting this trip organized and off the ground and coordinated are many, especially during this pandemic that we're still in sort of. But Pastor Denise is persevering with God's help and strength. And even when we didn't, didn't think it was going to all come together this year, it has. And we're trusting that God's going to use it to do some amazing things. Are you trying to be faithful to God but feeling like there's a lot working against you? Keep at it. Keep making waves. Trust that God 
will deliver you. Have you been afraid maybe <clears throat> to step out in faith, to do something that God's been calling you to do? You're, you're worried that it's too risky, too dangerous, impossible, just too much. There's, there's no way that you'll be able to do it. Trust that where God calls, that God will provide. Take a step of faith and trust that God will deliver you from, from any obstacles and challenges, from anything that tries to hold you back from doing God's will. Final point this morning is making waves for Jesus takes radical obedience. You know, when the angel freed the apostles from jail, you'd think they'd be allowed to, to go home to their families or, or even to run to the hills and escape, right? To get out of Jerusalem before they were arrested again or worse. But that's not the instructions the angel gave them. The angel does not tell them any of those things. Instead, we see in verse 20, the angel tells them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. What? Go back to the temple? Y you know they just arrested us and probably want to kill us, right? I, I need to go get my family and get the heck out of town before the officials figure out what's happened. That's probably what I would have said. I, I bet that's probably what most of us would have said, something along those lines, right? But that's not the response of the apostles. Verse 21 recounts their courage and their radical obedience. And it says at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple as they were told and immediately began teaching. Wow. If we really want to make waves and change the world around us, bringing good in the name of Jesus, then we too must be willing to radically obey what God tells us to do. We need to listen daily for, for what the Lord might be telling us through our Bible reading and, and prayer time, and then, and then act quickly on what we hear from God, even if it seems scary or impossible. That's where the, the radical part comes in. If asked, I think all of us would say, of course we want to obey what the Lord tells us, right? But if we are truthful with ourselves, we would admit that we rationalize, we delay, we, we soften and kind of water down what God tells us. We're willing to obey if it's not too far out of our comfort zone, if it doesn't cost us too much, if we don't have to reprioritize our lives or, or even our day to do it. We're like the man who told Jesus, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father, then I'll follow you. Or the other person who said, yes, Lord, I, I will follow you, but, but first let me say goodbye to my family. These people wanted to obey, but not radically. They're just like us. Which of us would not want to first bury our father or mother or, or say goodbye to, to family before heading off somewhere to follow Jesus? Those seem like reasonable, even sensible things, right? And certainly Jesus would understand, wouldn't he? Yes, Jesus understands. And Jesus is full of grace and love. But Jesus also laments, knowing that this kind of response is symptomatic of, of much more. As important as family or friends or careers or our retirement or our reputations might be, they cannot be more important than Jesus. If Jesus is not on the throne, he's not really Lord. But if he is Lord then we will put him above all else in our lives and we will obey, even, even radically. I don't know about you, but, but I need help with this. 
I need friends to help keep me accountable and encourage me. I need the Holy Spirit to to pull me along because I want to go back and say goodbye to my family. So I need the Holy Spirit to, to give me the power and the strength to say yes to what God's telling me first before doing the things that I think, you know, are important too. Otherwise, I realize I won't be able to follow Jesus the way he wants me to. My waves won't be so big after all, and the impact they'll have will be a lot less than I might hope. The world around me won't really be changed, at least not the parts that I'm participating in. God will still do what God's going to do. You know, if this is making you, uh, this, this last point, if it's making you a little uncomfortable, right, join the crowd. This is, this is hard stuff, right? The, the stuff that Jesus tells us and, and the stuff in the, the Bible isn't, isn't always easy. These are some of the hard sayings of Jesus that we have to confront and wrestle with in our own lives. What does it, what does it mean for us to really follow Jesus, to, to make the waves that, that we want to make? passages like this that, that calls me and maybe, maybe you too to, to take a hard look at how we're following Jesus. I know I'm asking, am, am I doing everything God is asking of me even if it seems risky or impossible? A- am I procrastinating or delaying my response in any way? Is there anything that I'm ignoring from God or, or rationalizing away? Have I prioritized other things in my life over Jesus, even important things? Friends, the the needs around us and in our world, especially right now, are many, aren't they? Whether it's the, the mass shootings that are on the rise these last several weeks in our country, even, even right here in Smithsburg, Maryland, not far from us, or the violent crime in, in Baltimore City that's just a half hour away from us. Or the, the hungry people that we're finding right here in Howard County. Who would have thought that there's poverty and hunger in Howard County, one of the, the richest, most affluent counties in the whole world? Or maybe it's the friend or the neighbor that's in need next door. Just yesterday I was writing the sermon. We hear a fire truck and an ambulance go by and three houses down, they stop. We don't know what's going on. I'm writing this sermon and I feel like, okay, we we need to follow up. My wife comes in and she said, did you hear that? And I said, yeah. And, and she actually was the one who found out that it was just down the street, one of our neighbors. So we, we called just to make sure that they were okay. Is there anything they needed? And I didn't know they had a, a 87-year-old, uh, their 87-year-old mom living with them, and she wasn't doing well. So I got a chance just to pray with him on text, and, and I'm trying to follow up. I followed up later in the day but didn't hear back. But you know, it's, it'd be easy to just, hey, I'm busy. I've got other things to do. The ambulance is there. They'll take care of it. But whether it's something big like mass shootings or whether it's just something small like paying attention to what's going on around us with our coworkers, our friends, our neighbors, we can make waves in the name of Jesus and bring the good of Jesus around us. But we've got to pay attention. We've got to be willing to radically obey, get out of our comfort zones, prioritize what God tells us, we're going to face challenges and opposition for sure. However, however, we can trust that when we are being faithful to what God has called us to do, that God will deliver. So how will you respond this week? What specifically is God calling you to do? How might you make some waves with the people around you? Or maybe with a a bigger issue, that a justice issue or a bigger issue in our country or in our 
county? What, what step does God want you to take this week to make waves in the name of Jesus? And who will you share this with? Who do you need to invite along with you to make some waves? Because we can make bigger waves together, can't we? Have you ever been in the wave pool? Remember um, when I was growing up, it was called Wild World or Wild Wave. I think it was now at Six Flags there on 214 Central Avenue. But it, probably a lot of these water parks have them. And remember the, the, the wave maker in those pools and the kids would get in and the, they would make the waves. Well, we would, at our home pool, we would try to make waves ourselves. And if, you know, you got in the pool by yourself, you could kind of jump up and down and make some waves and, and that never made too many waves. But if you could get a bunch of your friends together and kind of line up and all start going up and down in the pool, next thing you know, the whole pool is kind of, you know, starting to have waves. Then the little kids are, you know, and the lifeguards yelling at you, hey, stop that, kids. You, anybody do any of that? Am I the only crazy one that would do those kind of things? But together we can, make, we can make bigger waves in the name of Jesus that make a difference in the world around us. So happy summer. We're, we're still a couple more days from the official summer, but I think it's kind of feeling like summer now, even though the sky's kind of dark and cool. But, but it's, we're just, it's summer about here, so happy summer. Now go make some waves. Let's pray. God, as we just listen for your Holy Spirit to speak to us, we know that you're calling us to some things You're calling us to to make waves in the world around us. God, ultimately, these these waves are are good waves. We wanna wanna help introduce people to Jesus who who clears away the the hurt and the pain and the sin in in our lives. Jesus smooths things over. He, he, He helps us to reset. He gives us a new life. And he even gives us eternity. We, we thank you that you do that for us in Jesus. Those are the kind of waves we want to make, God. There, there's a lot of hurt and pain in our world. So thank you for giving us the, the gift of your Holy Spirit that, that enables us to make a difference around us. Please help us to follow you like the apostles did who responded in radical obedience, even in the face of great opposition. No matter what we face, and God, it it is a lot these days, may we trust you to deliver us, even in miraculous ways, so that we can continue to make a difference and change the world in the name of Jesus. God, we love you, and we do pray these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Our next song is The Summons. It's a, it's a song in the faith we sing, so it's the little black hymnals. If you like to follow along in the hymnal, it's number 2130. But uh, of course, we'll have it on the screen as well. So let's stand and continue to, to worship God as we sing The Summons. Thank you. 
Amen. This week, um, I got a nudge uh, about something going on in, in Baltimore City. I've got a pastor that I've reached out to over there. So I, I'm going to just reach out. I don't know what God's going to do with that. That's, a, that's really scary for me uh, a bit with Baltimore City. But, but I felt a nudge, so I'm going to obey that and reach out. I have reached out to this pastor, and I'm going to connect. Uh, and I'm even going to invite some other people that I know along. And uh, we're going to go out and, and visit and just see uh, what God's doing there, what God uh, might speak to us as, as we go out to Baltimore City um, and as I invite people to come, I'm going to share kind of just this Acts 5 and, and, and making waves through the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. So how about you? What's, what's the step you're going to take this week? How might you make some waves for Jesus wherever God's calling you? And who will you share with? Thanks for being with us today to worship. Don't forget uh, our fellowship uh, hall. We'll have uh, some hot coffee. It's a little chilly and rainy outside, but the coffee's hot and the snacks are delicious. So spend a few moments in there and, and uh, greet some of your friends and, and neighbors and church family. God bless you. We'll see you next week, if not before.